Hello dear ones, it's Alice. Um, I've been listening to the reading at, at church uh, this week and uh, the readings have been about a guy named Saul. Uh, during the earliest days of Christianity after Christ's ascension. And this guy Saul was something else. He uh, he would, wherever, apparently, the followers of Christ were working all kinds of miracles amongst people, and they were filled with like the energy of, of grace and light and love, and what they call the Holy Spirit. And they would go and talk to people, and and God's grace would like flow from their from their aura and from their from their speech, and and. It would run as it does to, as it's been happening recently. Um, what with all the new incoming light, which is the light of Christ consciousness, the light of their Christ consciousness uh, would hit upon the, um, the like the stucknesses, the small stucknesses, the what what Judy Satori calls the morphogenetic field distortions uh, uh, in their hologram. And, and that would cause jarring of nerves and aggravation and like that until, until they got through with it. So, so amongst the people that, that he healed, these people healed, like Stephen, for instance, and, um, and spoke to and, and uplifted with words and with energy, uh, there were those that, whose nerves were so jarred that they just, um, they blamed him for the, the chance they had to achieve greater God consciousness, which was creating awareness of the stuckness that needed to be removed, you know. And so, as I recall from the readings this, this, in the last few days, um, a very vivid scene was when uh, Stephen was taken up before, uh, was it the Sanhedrin? And all kinds of people got together and, and accused him of this and that. And the Sanhedrin um, heard the words of the people who were accusing and then looked at Stephen. And Stephen's uh, uh, face was full of light. And that's where that particular reading ended. So the truth of Stephen was not in, in the words that people spoke about him, but rather in the energy that, that he held and gifted to the world. So then there was another reading, and this that was pretty dismal reading about Stephen because um, some people, the same people probably, <laughs> got together and 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 incited um, incited everyone to stone him. I don't know if they they actually stoned him to death or, but close anyway. And and this guy Saul was like walking or riding by, and Saul was kind of overseeing this this stoning process of the of the person who held great Christ consciousness right so so I got a few days ago I got that Saul was like the, in in his energy field he was solidly opposed to love so then there was a, a passage in there where Saul was like going along looking for the next chance to persecute somebody who felt uh, love in their heart and professed belief in Christianity. <laughs> and, uh, and he was struck down, right? Something happened. He was struck down with blindness. And then today there was a reading and it was about how there was a certain disciple of Christ who heard from God that he should go over to Saul who has, was suffering from blindness. And so he was cured of blindness. So from that, I, I deducted two, uh, two things. One is that back then, where there was, there was um, communication on a telepathic level, open, Christ paved, like, made a, a, a place where these disciples could, could directly receive the incoming, incoming higher light of, of God um, through grace during those times and consequently they were able to actually communicate with God and maybe with one another for all we know so in, in a way there was the highest form of, 
what they call the internet, the t telepathic ability. The ability to communicate upwards was happening with these disciples, and they were pulling down the grace of, the grace of, the great grace of the divine. Okay, so that was a time like this. This time when we are able to do that, uh, t now is the time of the, the return to Christ consciousness. So, anyway, I had one other thought about this blindness. There is something called, um, um, geez, ocular migraine. I think that's the name of it. And what that is, is temporary blindness. It is one of the manifestations. There's strange ocular sensations that then go away. It, it appears suddenly and it disappears suddenly. And according to Judy Satori, um, and I agree completely on this, my intuition tells me she's right on about it. The cause of ocular migraine may well be the, the greater opening of the third eye. And as you know, the third eye, that chakra, the pineal and the pituitary, are the master glands of the body. They create physical health, and they also put us in touch with higher consciousness. So that moment uh, when Saul was struck down uh, by blindness may have been the moment of epiphany for him, or onset of epiphany. So there's that. So here you have a guy. He's, he's stuck on the idea of not feeling his heart, of actually persecuting people who do feel their hearts. And there's been talk on the internet about controllers, right? And power over. And uh, as John Smallman says in his blog, beautiful blogs, um, the thing to do about folks who feel that way is to inundate them with a tsunami of love. And that's something I agree to, too. The only true way to look at um, uh, attempts to control is to... Judy Satori said it, said it very well recently. She said, when we sense uh, things that cause negative emotions in us, whether on the physical or on the astral plane, everything that we sense is God talking directly to us, saying to us, feel the emotion that you feel when this negative thing comes towards you, this negative emotion, if there is a negative emotion. All right. If it's a positive thing, then that's a win. That's a wonderful thing. And, and that indicates that we're heading in the right direction towards Christ consciousness. Because Christ consciousness is all about positive emotions. Love. Gratitude. Appreciation. Like that. And all the other emotions that we feel as a result of what we hear and see, physically or uh, astrally, those negative emotions that we feel are, are, are the important thing about our interactions on those planes because those are the patterns that we must clear in order to uh, come into Christ consciousness. Um, and I have my own ideas about it, you know, because I practice kundalini yoga. I suggest sat kriya. It's pretty easy. You can do it for like three minutes and, and unblock. I find that the easiest thing. Uh, well, it's a little disconcerting, but it's, it's well worth it because it opens you up to, to your many powers that are associated with your godliness, with your Christ consciousness. So... Um, so the only further thing I have to add to that is the illumination I had. The interesting thing about the controller mental filter is that uh, it happens because we wish to feel safe. And when we're able to achieve it, we feel safe. So it's a very difficult mental box to get out of. It has its own, like, uh, uh, booby trap. It hits booby trapped. It's booby-trapped by the minor rewards that we receive 
by continuing uh, with this mental limitation. When we feel power you know, through the third chakra, we have to wait until we get physical symptoms and then, apparently, and then we, we go onward through a desire to preserve our own lives, you know. I wouldn't want to be in that boat right now. Actually, I used to think, geez, why am I always persecuted, scapegoated, all this stuff, all these people, you know? And now I think, geez, it's a lot easier to clear that kind of karma, those kinds of incarnational um, woundings, because it hurts a lot, and I notice right away. So, so in a way, you know, I'm blessed to feel this pain and not feel that, that rigidity thing, because that's a hard one. Of course, I got my own challenges, you know. <laughs> so... So I wish us all, you know, the opportunity in whichever way to understand what we're facing and what we must eliminate.